Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all here this afternoon. My name is Dennis Williams, and I am the principal here at Happy Horsham High School. I am both honored and excited to kick off this afternoon's ceremony and provide a few opening remarks for you this afternoon. It's always a pleasure to be afforded the opportunity to devote time to honoring the academic achievements of students and recognizing the hard work and dedication that it takes to reach the stage here today. Before I move forward in my opening remarks, I would ask that you please respect the formal nature of this event and take a few moments, just a few seconds, just to please silence any cellular phones uh, or noise-making devices that you may have, all air horns and anything else that you may have to recognize students. If you just take a, a second to do that for me, please, I would appreciate it. The National Honor Society, created in 1921 in the city of Pittsburgh, was established to recognize students who exceed in four key categories. Those four categories were and still remain scholarship, service, leadership, and character. We will recognize and celebrate 55 students here this afternoon. In a very real sense, the parents and guardians, relatives and friends share this honor as well. For it is you who have provided the basis for the development of your son and or daughter's character, their thirst to seek knowledge, their capacity for leadership, and their desire to serve their school and school community. For our students, your achievements in the realms of scholarship, leadership, community service, and character are being honored here this afternoon by your induction into this very prestigious society. I'd be negligent in my responsibilities if I did not also take an opportunity to recognize a number of individuals. I ask you to please turn over your program and look at the list of people who have contributed mightily to this process in this afternoon's ceremony, including the Selection Committee and Mrs. Deerdorf, the National Honor Society moderator. To all of you, I say thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would ask that you please join us by standing for the singing of our national anthem which will be performed by our Magicals group under the direction, I'm sorry, Women's Ensemble, Women's Ensemble, <laughs> under the direction of Mr. Bill Naden after our national anthem. The next voices that you will hear will be that of Mrs. Deerdorf and also our National Honor Society officers. Good afternoon and welcome. The National Honor Society officers are each going to light a candle signifying one of the four traits that is important to the National Honor Society. We'll begin with Tony May. Thank you for giving me this chance to speak, and congratulations to the newly inducted NHS members from the classes of 2013 and 14. Despite the role character plays in our lives, it usually isn't the first thing that comes to mind when someone mentions NHS. 
Most people will think about the service we do, the grades we strive for, and the clubs and teams we lead. And I guess there's a good reason for that. Because character isn't like GPA or test scores, and it's not something that can be written and handed in as part of an application. For some people, this is frustrating. And I'm willing to bet that all of you, at one time, believed that the world was unfair as you watched someone with a lack of integrity succeed, at least in the short run. And for those people, it's comforting, knowing that most of our character is hidden, something others can catch glimpses of but never see. And I think that realization is what makes NHS special. Because despite the reputation or image we work hard to cultivate for our friends or teachers or even colleges, we know that the quiet character we demonstrate through our daily actions and decisions is the most important. Because in the end, you are the only true judge of your own character. And in the end, that's all that matters. I light this candle for character. <laughs> this is an annual event that we have trouble. Thank you. One of the four pillars of the National Honor Society is scholarship. Many students associate scholarship with grade point average. While having a GPA of at least 3.75 is a requirement to be a member of the National Honor Society, scholarship is much more than that. It is one's commitment to learning. It is seeking new knowledge without being told to. It is truly being interested in learning the world around you outside of school. It is also keeping up with current events to further advance your inter intellectual growth. If you want to become a scholar, try to take your focus off from getting a perfect 4.0 GPA. Instead, take the knowledge you take in every day Soon learning will become a lifelong skill and prepare for your success in the future. I will now light the candle for scholarship. Thank you. When I envision a leader, I do not immediately picture the man seated at the head of the table or the sergeant barking orders at his soldiers. I think of the individuals who take charge to help others in the areas where they are capable of doing so. Sitting behind me are talented athletes, mathematicians, and musicians. There are passionate artists, artists, writers, and actors and actresses. Not only do they strive for greatness, but they have also shown their willingness to steer others down the same path. These students have displayed their leadership throughout the Hapro Horsham community and are today being commended for their actions. A true leader's purpose is not to lead, rather it is to guide. Parents, teachers, and administrators Thank you for guiding your children and students to where they are today. They could, without your leadership, they could not have become the leaders they are. Inductees, congratulations for your achievement. I hope you continue to display leadership throughout your high school career and beyond. I now light this candle for uh, leadership. Thank you. <laughs> the 
final characteristic of National Honor Society members is service. Everyone sitting on stage has dedicated countless hours of their time to serving their community. They take time out of their very busy schedules to care for others. They join clubs like Key Club or Helping Little Hands, and they volunteer at soup kitchens, teach Sunday school classes, tutor their peers, and do so much more. These members are selfless individuals who are continued to volunteer their time throughout high school, college, and beyond. And now light this candle for service. Thank you. As always, I'm in awe of the students who are about to be inducted into the National Honor Society. I'm the first person who sees their uh, application materials and I get to read about all of the activities that they're involved in and often wonder how they have time to do it. They've excelled in all endeavors at Hapro Horsham, sports, community service organization, musical groups, cultural study, and leadership in our school. But I would also like to acknowledge the current members of the National Honor Society. They are the students who are sitting on this side of the stage. The students who came before, who led the way, who set the standard. These senior, seniors will soon graduate and go on to share their gifts with new people in new settings. While we will surely miss them, I can assure all of them that they are leaving the school in competent hands. We're proud of your accomplishments and grateful to you for sharing your talents with all of us. With the current members of the National Honor Society, please rise so that we can thank you for your service and leadership to Hapro Horsham High School. I'm going to turn the, uh, the induction over to Jenny. Get started with, with have the people who are speaking come up. Okay. okay. The people who are saying, saying names. names. Okay. Um, now we will actually induct the inductees to be. So can I have Jenny Kim and Jackie Givinazzo come up? Anne-Marie Winters. Anne-Marie has been involved with the marching band since her sophomore year. She has been appointed captain for the 2012 to 2013 Color Guard season. Richard Connor Wilson. Connor is an aspiring computer software and electrical engineer who is, let, is the lead programmer on the Hapro Horsham first robotics team. He also enjoys intramural soccer and chess club. Madeline Morzniak. Maddie has been involved in the Hopper Horsham Student Council and swim team since freshman year. She has been elected captain for the 2013 to 2014 season. <laughs> Philip Torizani. Phil is the captain of the varsity wrestling team. He was also in the play Addict this fall. <laughs> Curtis Sumner. Curtis has been on the Hopper Horsham swim team for three years. He also plays the piano in the jazz band and has done so since his freshman year. Aaron Selnick. Aaron is an avid participant in extracurricular activities. He especially enjoys spring tennis, the hot chat, and jazz band. Mary Kate Selgraff. Mary Kate is Vice President of the Junior Advisory Board. She is also an active member of the both cross country and the track team. Samuel Schwartz. Sam is an active participant in student council, hat chat, and math club. He plays varsity spring tennis and also plays soccer and basketball. Benjamin Reese. Ben has played basketball and baseball for three years. Ben enjoys playing sports with his friends on the weekends. Rachel Rauza. 
Rachel has been involved with lacrosse and field hockey since freshman year and is a member of student council. Erica Raske. Erica has been a member of the Hapro Horsham Marching Unit since her freshman year. She is also part of the Indoor Percussion Unit and a Girl Scout. Nicole Palekia. Nicole has been involved in student council and advisory board since ninth grade. She is also a member of the varsity swim team. Deborah Peck. Deb enjoys playing tennis. She has also been involved at Key Club and Interact. Kirsten Newbeck. Kirsten has been an active participant in student council since her freshman year. She is interested in pursuing a career in law and criminal justice after high school. Kristen Lewinsky. Kristen has been involved in student council since freshman year. She is also a member of FBLA. Michael Morina. Mike has played several sports at Hapro Horsham, particularly baseball. He has also been involved with student council since freshman year. Melissa McNeil. Melissa has been ha heavily involved in student council, advisory board, interact, and other clubs throughout high school. Catherine, oh, sorry, Catherine McKay. Katie has been a member of student council and FBLA and enjoys playing lacrosse and volleyball in her free time. Marissa Murano. Marissa has been involved with student council and interact since her freshman year. She enjoys running and cooking. Emily Magnet. Emily, or Emmy is involved in track and gymnastics. She is also a level three coach for Special Olympics. Sorry. Andrew Magnet. Drew has played baseball, soccer, and, and has run track. He is also involved with advisory board. Benjamin Lebowski. Ben is involved in Hat Chat, Key Club, and the theater department. Do Han Kim. Jeff participates in winter track as well as boys tennis. He enjoys running, playing tennis, and reading in his spare time. Kyle Kearney. Kyle's not here today as he is attending the Model UN Conference in Washington, DC. Kyle is an active member of Student Council and FBLA. He currently holds positions in both clubs. Min Jung. James has been in the boys tennis since his freshman year. He has played drums since the beginning of his high school year. Emily Janisak. Emily has been involved in student council since freshman year. She is also a member of the yearbook committee. Marissa Isazari. Marissa is heavily involved in service projects at Upper Dublin Lutheran Church, and she plans to attend James Madison University next year to become a math teacher. In Sung Huang. In Sung has played football for four years. He plans on majoring in chemistry. Natalie Hurst. Natalie is involved in Key Club, Advisory Board, and FBLA. Natalie also runs long distance for the school spring track team. Kelly Hogan. Kelly has been an active member of FBLA and student council since her freshman year. She has also played volleyball competitively for three years. Jane Henry. Jane is involved in FBLA, Interact, and Student Council. She enjoys playing field hockey and lacrosse. Kimberly Hench. Kimberly has been involved in Student Council and Interact. She also enjoys academics and playing the violin with the orchestra. Rachel Handwork. Rachel is involved in many sports and activities, her favorites being cross country and student council. She plans on pursuing engineering in college. <laughs> Maria Guerra. Maria is involved in student council, advisory board, and is a member of the National Art Honor Society. She plays varsity soccer and lacrosse. 
Deja Gaskins. Deja has been a dedicated dancer for the past 14 years. She enjoys dancing in and out, out of school. She will be attending Westchester University to study business. <laughs> Carly Foster. Carly is the president of the Hapro Horsham Spark the Wave Club. She has also been involved in the Hatters Inc. Since, club since her freshman year. Erica Exton. Erica's favorite school activity is Hatch Hat, in which she has been involved since her freshman year. She also enjoys the Interact Club and playing with the tennis team. Colby Eldridge. Colby is a member of Interact FBLA and Student Council. She also enjoys playing field hockey and lacrosse. Cassandra Dula. Cassandra is currently attending the Model UN Conference in Washington, D.C. She is also Vice President of Interact and a varsity cheerleader. Kelsey Duell. Kelsey is also attending the Washington Area Model UN Conference. She is involved in Student Council and is the Spotlights Editor of the Hat Chat. <laughs> Andrew Doberstein. Andrew has been a member of Student Council since freshman year. He enjo also enjoys running track and co cross country. Sorry. <laughs> Annette DeCifio. Annette has been involved, been involved in FBLA and advisory board. She also plays soccer and lacrosse. <laughs> Catherine Denner. Kate is involved in robotics, rugby, and theater. She enjoys a good quesadilla. <laughs> Joe DeBell. Joe has been a member of Student Council since his freshman year. He loves playing and watching sports. Jake Cresta. Jake enjoys playing lacrosse and golf. He also likes to read and kayak. <laughs> Nicole Casagran. Nicole will be attending University of Maryland, Baltimore County, where she will be playing softball. She enjoys playing softball and spending time with her friends and family. Brianna Branco. Brianna is the president of the Junior Advisory Board. In addition, she is the vice president, president of the National Art Honor Society. <laughs> Matthew Bernicke. Matt is a trombone player in the Hopper Horsham Jazz Ensemble. He instructs karate and also holds an executive board position for his youth group. Catherine Bennett. Catherine has been a part of the cheerleading squad and the black dance team since freshman year. She is also a part of her church group. Her church group. <laughs> Lauren Baumeister. Lauren has been on the swim team since freshman year. She is also an active key club member. Dylan Oshbach. Dylan is a dedicated tennis player and runner on the track team. He loves playing the alto saxophone and hopes to compete in track and field at the college level. Stephanie Arman. Stephanie is a treasurer of the Class of 2014 Advisory Board. She has also been a dancer since she was three years old. Sonali Agrawal. Sonali loves helping people and has been involved in many community service activities throughout the years. She enjoys dancing and playing tennis. Caroline Acker. Caroline has been involved in student council and advisory board. She also enjoys being on the field of hockey and the cross teams at school. Catherine Abraham. Katie is a sound technician for stage crew. She also participates in French Club, Model UN, Yearbook, and Science Club. Congratulations. Congratulations, Congratulations. to all the new inductees. Thank you. <laughs> Announce what you're doing as you're leading them in the pledge. Ask them to all rise. Congratulations again to all the new inductees. You will now rise for the pledge for National Honor Society. I 
pledge, I pledge to maintain high scholastic standing, to, standing, to, hold, as worthy, to hold as worthy an untarnished character, an untarnished character to endeavor Intelligently and, courageously, intelligently and courageously to be a leader, be a leader. And, to and to give of myself freely in service to others, service to others. I, pledge, I pledge by word and deed, word and deed to, make the to make the ideals of the National Honor Society my own. My own. Congrats. <laughs> Our guest speaker today is Habro Horsham alumnus Jonathan Baikowski. Prior to graduating in 1998, Mr. Baikowski was involved in the fall play, the spring musical, marching band, student council, and National Honor Society. When asked for his favorite memory from high school, he will tell you that one day at band camp, he met his wife. Post-graduation, he attended Philadelphia University, where he attained degrees in interior design and architecture. Currently, he is an architect and senior planner at Array Architects. Through his work, he is incredibly committed to the healthcare industry. One of his greatest work achievements is helping to design a new women's and children's hospital in Tampa, Florida, which at the time of the design featured the largest all-private neonatal intensive care unit in the country. In knowing that he could help to reduce the stress in some small way of families dealing with an enormous burden, this is the project that he is the most proud of. The other achievement he is the most proud of is his son, who turns seven months old today. We are honored to have Mr. Baikowski speak to us today. Please welcome Jonathan Baikowski. Thank you very much. Um, let's get that right first. Mr. Barsky, it may be time to replace this. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. I want to start by um, congratulating all of the inductees and those standing members of the National Honor Society. Uh, it's quite an achievement to, to achieve this, and it's a wonderful thing. It's a little bit awkward that you're behind me, but know that I thought of you when I was thinking of these remarks, even though I'm going to ignore you now as I give them. <laughs> Um, and my wife is not here, so I should edit the record on her behalf. I played a small role in the achievement of our son, who is seven months old today. Uh, but she should get the bulk of that credit. But I want to talk a little bit about uh, my time at Harper Horsham um, and share with you some memories that are important to me and, and in the hopes that they might provide some insight into um, something that you all might achieve or think about as well. Um, and I want to start with the academics. We heard a lot about academics today and scholarship, which are a really important thing. And the lessons that I learned here at Hapro Horsham um, have served me well and do every day. Um, I continue to realize that when I went off to college, I was far more prepared than my peers were academically. Um, Mrs. Brigham, in for instance, taught me how to write an essay. And her basic approach to writing is still how I approach writing everything I do today, including these notes that I'm going to deliver this afternoon. Uh, she taught me how to read classic literature, which is very useful when you try to play Jeopardy at home from your couch. Um, and she also taught me how to think about my life and others' lives in the world and compare my experiences to the greater world. And that's something that so many educators at Hapro Horsham tried to instill in us, which far transcended the importance of the actual curriculum. Uh, Mrs. Gambali was my trigonometry teacher. Um, I was pretty convinced at the time that everything she taught us was useless. Uh, needing to know how large a pipe would be in order to transfer water from a pool to a tank in a given amount of time seemed to have no practical application whatsoever in my life. And we continued to do these problems about figuring out the lengths of triangles. Turns out, as an architect, I do the triangle problems all the time. That's another way to think about how you make a roof. So let this be a first lesson of our little talk today. There is actually a practical application for math. So the academic preparation was excellent. And I think that it cannot be underscored. You have great opportunities. You are students at an excellent school system. Take advantage of it every day, because what is provided to you is going to serve you for the rest of your lives. But I'm not sure that that was the most valuable experience that I had while I was at Hapro Horsham, because there's a lot of learning that can take place adjacent to the classroom. I was able to find opportunities to become part of group activities, and so many of the inductees that we heard about just a moment ago do the same thing. 
I was able to find places that I could explore my interests, learn to be part of a team, and where most importantly I was able to identify a career path that otherwise I may never have considered. For me it was not sports. I can't even catch a set of car keys. But there were a number of activities and I imagine there still are today and so if you could find something that you were able to find something that resonated with you. I was a fairly organized kid which is a euphemism for I was neurotic. And I discovered quickly that it's useful to other people when you can channel that neuroses to organize large tasks and activities. So I started helping with the all school musical in a production role. As a ninth grader who was pretty organized, I assumed that I was likely destined for some sort of career in business management, some description. I could make a spreadsheet, I could keep track of a list of things that people had to do, and I could hound them like a dog when they didn't do them on time. So perhaps I was going to be an accountant. Friends of mine who are accountants, if they were here today, would require an inhaler treatment. They'd be laughing so hard at that idea. I'm not an accountant. Uh, four years later, through no path that I ever could have mapped out for myself when I, when I began to help out with the first all-school musical, I found myself as the first student to independently costume the spring musical the year that we did Greece. Those, organi those organizational skills helped me map out a plan to create costumes for 80 plus cast members and to organize the 19 moms who were my team, some of whom I think are here today, and we had a good time, didn't we moms? I also learned through that process that I had a creative bone or two in my body, and I hadn't really thought of myself that way before that time. My guidance counselor at the time, Mr. Hickey, was fairly certain that I did, and he pushed me to take a risk, which I was very uncomfortable doing when I did it. So there's another lesson for, for today. Being open to the advice of people around us who are more experienced than we are, it turns out they do periodically have some wisdom to impart. And I just want to throw a little shout out here again to Mrs. Gambali, from whom we borrowed all of the period jewelry. Remember, she was the teacher who made me do all the triangle problems. So it does turn out that math teachers are practically useful in the world as well. So we should really just as a whole be nicer to them. Beyond the design of the costumes, though, I was responsible for achieving the costumes. We had a budget, we had a schedule, and we had a target outcome. And I figured out how to get us from point A to point B. And much more importantly than getting from point A to point B, I discovered that that too was a form of creativity. To see a solution among a complex puzzle was, a way, was about innovative problem solving more than it was about numbers or spreadsheets. And now that is actually what I do for a living. The lesson, although there is no way I could have articulated it at the time, was that I had the ability to be a creative leader. It wasn't a far leap to architecture. Today I design hospitals and healthcare facilities arguably some of the more complex buildings we build in our communities. Hospitals must be safe, they should inspire hope and healing, and they have to allow the execution of a complex care of critical team providers. They're massive, and they're designed by large groups of consultants whose activities must be carefully coordinated, and it's certainly ill-advised to design a hospital that then doesn't work. So what am, I, what am I talking about and why am I sharing this with all of you? Most of you probably don't own a sewing machine and, and the majority of you can probably successfully catch a set of car keys when they're thrown at you. I share this story not because it's directly applicable to you. You may not stand here 15 years, that's right, 15 years, that's sobering, and recount the undescribable, or indescribable if I got that right, thrill you felt standing in the wings backstage and listening to an audience gasp out loud when the lights came on in the opening scene and your costumes were set against the stage in a striking manner. And it never occurred to you that other people might enjoy something that you created that much. I share my experience only to ask you to heighten your awareness, to suggest that you be involved and you remain involved, that you take some risks, and that you look for education in your life beyond the traditional classroom. There is much to be learned and experienced, and you won't know the value of the curriculum in the moment. I'm not sure that I fully understood the downstream impact on my life that coordinating a high school musical program book in 1994 really had until I sat down to collect these notes. You don't need to understand how an experience will shape you at the time that you experience it. You only need to know that if you don't look for those opportunities to challenge yourself and to grow, you won't. You learn lots during the fun. Let yourself have some fun. The supported freedom that I enjoyed here at a very impressionable age allowed me to shape the life that I, was, that I went on to create. It simply never occurs to me that I can't influence a situation through collaboration and creativity. I don't wait to be invited to contribute if I think I can add value. 
Today, in the firm where I work, I am developing a new role for architects that brings the challenges that doctors and nurses face every day delivering care to the forefront of how we design solutions for their facilities. I am creating and organizing a new way to think about designing hospitals, because the way that we've done it in the past is full of flaws and leads to frequent errors. I saw these flaws over the course of several projects and started thinking about how our industry could do better. The confidence to challenge an industry's status quo is something that I've developed through education and experience, and I feel very prepared to take on the challenge. But that started here, there actually, in a pair of black jeans and a long sleeve black t-shirt with a pair of fabric scissors tucked in my pockets. Thank you very much.
I want to thank all of the parents and family members for coming today, and I'm awful glad to see students in the audience as well. I hope that next year we'll see you up on the stage. A special thanks to Mr. Naden and to the Women's Ensemble. I would not want to have a program without the beautiful music that they produce. And a special thank you also to Jenny Ree, who played the piano as you came in. <laughs> <laughs>